I am happy to welcome to the show Ryan Jones, lead singer, writer, and rhythm guitarist from the emerging rock band out of California, Corvus Lore. Alongside Ryan is Mike Anetto on bass and vocals, Joel Cloutier on drums, and Eric Fraser on lead guitar. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thanks for being here. How are you doing today? Doing awesome, Guido. Thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. How's the Bay or the South Bay? Well, it's sunny right now. We were, yeah. we're kind of done with the, the monsoon that I'm sure all of you heard about. It's been absolutely crazy, wicked weather down here. Just the rains have been astronomical. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day out here right now. Monsoon. So like really a lot of rain? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, California has been in droughts for I don't know how, how many years, but yeah. that's been all wiped clean. I mean, we had record snow levels of 700 plus inches and I think people are still digging themselves out so but it was welcome but i think everybody's done with it so is it is it so drenched that we're not going to hear about the fires this year you think or what <laughs> that's a great question yeah. um i hope we don't hear about the fires this year it seems like every year yeah right california is dry and then burns up and then just hit repeat so uh hopefully that's not the case this year the last the you said monsoon the last monsoon i was in was at this place called Kerbati. It's a little island uh, mm. off, off, off in the distance from, from Hawaii. And uh, it's in the middle of, you know, the ocean, basically nowhere. And, and we get off the boat and we go to this little island. And I see everybody who lives there, like the, the, normal, the normal folk who live there, the residents, they right. start scattering. They just start running. And we're tourists. And I'm like, where's everybody going? <laughs> right? And then wham, this big monsoon comes through right. and you know the waters just rise quickly and it, as soon as it came like within 10 minutes it was gone and everybody came back out and i was like well, all right well thanks for you know looking out for the tourists here <laughs> <laughs> you guys are left to your own your, to your own devices there yeah yeah no it's uh, they call them atmospheric rivers out here we just kept getting nice. one storm after another but uh Anyways, we're here. We're still uh, above water, so all is good. Above water is good, and so we're talking. We're talking California. We're talking the Bay. Um, you know, just transitioning into music a little bit because that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about music with you tonight. So, uh, I, look at I've I've talked with some other folks, and they're saying, yeah, you know, the music scene in California has been changing. The music scene in Los Angeles has been changing. Is it like what are you seeing in terms of of and what's the change? Like, what are, are we talking? People leaving? Are we talking the type of music? Right. Or yeah, it's it's really hard to put your thumb on it. I, I mean, you hear the talk. I'm sure you have forever. Everybody talks about how rock is dead, and I mean, we even had a uh, PR firm turn us down because they said you know rock is dead, and we're like, are you kidding me? Everywhere we turn, I mean, there's great rock and roll coming out there. Uh, some of the class of rock is still alive and well and always will be. Um, and then you got great new emerging rock. And it's just, uh, to me, you know, rock has always stood, stood the test of time. And I think it always will be uh, forever present and just a, a mainstay in terms of a genre. But, you know, having lived in L.A. for a, a lot of years, really half my life, and then now up here in the Bay Area, I honestly haven't seen a, a whole lot of change. I mean, when we talk about rock, you know, there's different genres within rock, right? We went through the glam and the heavy metal and, you know, um, alternative and all that. And all that stuff still exists to a certain extent. But to me, I think uh, rock is very still, very relevant still. And it just, I think, you know, the giant uh, conglomerates and media and who knew what, they, what they want to push and promote they kind of push other things but rock was still always there but it's just not getting the attention it deserved yeah i i you know you're saying that and i'm thinking and like i've seen so many um you know different genres of, of rock come through the last little while and i'm right. thinking to myself man it's a it's alive and well and, and people are starving for it and and like i hear your sound um you know corvus laura i hear your sound and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, people are starving for that sound. And, right. you know, as I'm as I'm talking to fans or as as we get, you know, inquiries and stuff, uh, it, it's picking up and picking up. Now, what are you doing? Like, you know, you talked about the genres and, and what are you doing to influence this next generation of rockers? Um, what's what's different about it? That's 
that's really not our goal is to try to influence. I mean, we just want to play music that resonates with us, right? Um, you know, our music is really what I, what I hope is 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 for it to be timeless, right? You want music to be able to stand the test of time and span many decades and and you hear a lot of the influences within our music, you know, there's the peppering in of, you know, the, the 70s rock and the 80s and the 90s and so on. I mean, it's just a mixed mash of things. So we're really not trying to influence anybody to do this or that. We're just trying to be true to ourselves and, hey, this sounds great. Let's go with it. And people dig it and they dig it. Um, but, you know, it's everybody wants to put you in a box, I guess, per se. Right. And I, I get it. It's understandable. So, but I mean, we just focus on uh, just doing what we do and let the rest speak for itself. Is that, uh, is that something that's just happening organically? Like you, you talked about the peppering in of, of some of the different um, sounds we are hearing. And, and I'm glad you said that because later on, I was like, Oh, I have a few questions. I want to talk about your sound. Sure. But, hey, we're here right now. So, um, you know, is that organic or is that, um, is that part of the plan? Totally. Or yeah, totally. It, I, we, <laughs> I always joke. Uh, I, I always loved how bands would say, oh yeah, I want to sound like this or sound like that. And to me, that's like, okay, that's maybe an influence, but you know, what are you doing to make it yours? What are you doing to make it, you know, like unique and what it is that really sells you as a band and, and what is your sound? And we all have our influences, but Quite honestly, uh, Guido, I mean, we have all kinds of songs that, you know, some of them, I mean, darn near would sound like country, um, you know, or, you know, something that did come out of the 70s or like the Beatles or anything like that. Whatever's a good song to us, we're going to play it and we'll make it Corvus Lore, whatever that is, whatever people want to call that. But it's all organic. It's all authentic. You know, we'll walk in the room and we'll get on a tangent on something. If it sounds great, then we'll just go with it. But we don't try to, again, put ourselves in that box as well, right? Let the rest of the world do that. We're just focusing on writing good music. There was a there was a point in time where the industry did did do that a lot more, right? Let's put it in a box. This is what you totally. are. This is what you're supposed to be. And by the way, you got to do it for so many records, <laughs> right? Right. For so many albums, right? Right. Um, Ryan, you, you said the name a couple of times and I've been saying it, Corvus Lore. Um, it's an interesting band name. You know, if you if you if you start looking into it a little bit, you go, you know, there's the constellation, there's Apollo. Uh is, is that where this came from? And and how did you guys get to this point of the of the name of the Corvus Lore name? I wish I had a really awesome, cool, radical, sexy story to tell you about it. <laughs> but I don't. Hey. <laughs> uh, and some of the things you just share with me right now is like, I didn't know about that. That's pretty cool. Oh, no way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the truth be told is before we were Corvus Lore, we were actually called Silent Picture Show. And our first album was called Corvus Lore. And uh, anyways, we got some notification from some attorney guy who's representing some other band that was similar of name and was threatening us to change the name. And those are a little ridiculous. So long story short, uh, our lead guitarist, Eric Frazier said, oh, let's just call the band Corvus Lore. And that's what happened. And, and, you know, he's a big Alfred Hitchcock kind of guy and all that stuff. And mm, the so there we go. So there you go. I mean, it, that's where it kind of came from. An accidental thing. I like the name better than Silent Picture Show, though. So it worked out in the end. Yeah, I think it's 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 pretty funky, and you know, with the the whole crow in the middle, and so I took you down a path. I was I was all excited. I was like, oh man, it's the crow. Like, are they gonna come out dressed? Like, are they gonna do theatrics? <laughs> are they gonna do the crow? They're gonna do like a kiss right. theme at some point, and you know, long long black leather coats and everything. But no, eh? it's not no. <laughs> I mean, uh, what Peter Gabriel did some crazy stuff with Genesis back in the day, right? Where he wore those giant i don't know what the heck you want to call those things were but i can't imagine playing and and stuff like that you're, well, you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna bite the head off a crow or, or anything right like uh... no no <laughs> i don't want to i don't think i can't one up ozzy 
(laughs) (laughs) Thanks for listening to The Monthly Social here on YouTube. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button. It would mean the world to us. All right. Hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Take care. All right. I'll I'll quit on that. Um, You know, uh, you talked about the band and and being organic and, and, uh, you know, folks always, well, how'd you guys get together? How did did you all meet? And, you know, your origins are, are noted as being from South Bay. Um, right. and, and you could tell us maybe where, where each member might have come from, but you know, as, as cool as that is too, what, what brought Chorus Lore together as a, as a band? And, and what I mean are, you know, what are your, what are your elements? What are your characteristics? What are the events that brought this group together, including your origins of, of, you know, geographic origins in terms of where you came right. from? Well, as you mentioned, I'm from the LA area and I was living up where I do now for a handful of years, actually. And I was doing session work back and forth between here and LA. And um, the band really actually first, uh, some of the band members, myself included, uh, met at uh, at worship. We were on a worship team. And uh, Mike Oneto, our bassist, uh, was on the worship team quite a bit. And I would come in every so often as, as a guest and then m- actually more often uh than not for a while there and then joey cloutier our drummer he same thing he would be a guest there and uh it was funny eric frazier there was just one time he actually played there and uh we were in the back parking lot between uh sets and mike onetto our bassist i already shared some tracks of music that i've done in l.a so he was familiar that I was writing and he just mentioned in the parking lot to the, to the other guys right there say, Hey, you know, we should all play together sometime. And, uh, okay. So we all got together and we just, the chemistry just happened from there. Really. I mean, it was, it was really an accidental thing. I wasn't looking for a band and I, I don't think anybody else really was. <laughs> uh, I know, you know, Mike, Joey and Eric are all from the Bay Area and Mike and Eric have been in other bands together like some tribute bands and they've had their own levels of success on with other bands independently but they were they're already familiar with one another uh they haven't played in bands together uh prior to us getting together so it was just an accidental meeting and so that first time we got together I mean it was just so fluid so natural the chemistry was just Right there. I mean, it was it was a given. We had to do something. I like the story, like a bit of a subtle acquaintance, if you will, through through common yeah. interest and, and whatnot. Eh? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, how important are your roots when it comes to music? And at your roots, where you came from, how how does that play into and not just yourself, but any of the guys in the band? How important are your roots to you? I think they're very important. I mean, they do shape us, right? Um, we we're talking about influences a little, a little bit ago, but there's also that thing where aside from influences, it's just part of who you are, right? Your DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Music runs in my family quite a bit. My mom was a classically trained, uh, opera singer wow. um, and pianist. And my, uh, my dad's mom was the president of the LA Unified School, Dif- School Districts, uh, Music Association and, and she taught the neighborhood kids how to play piano as a single mom back in, you know, shoot, back in the 50s. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, I know Mike, you know, music goes back in his family quite a bit. And so does Eric. And so, you know, I think the guys, you know, really tap into that uh, quite a bit, to be honest. And uh, they don't just settle on influences. Again, I think it's just part of who they are. I, I think in order, if you really want to be successful in music or really, really anything in life, right. Outside of like influences and things that you like, I think there's just something that has to be within you, whatever that is, you want to call it. Like I just called it your DNA or whatever. I think that just has to be something that's wired into you. And, uh, all of us have that wiring without a doubt. Um, because you have that family history in music and and it sounds like an accomplished family history in music do you um did you feel pressure in in any kind of music pressure growing up no no my no my mom 
my mom unfortunately didn't really get a chance to do much with it um having raised a family you and i were were, were talking about kids a little while ago before we hopped on and uh so she didn't get really to pursue it in, in the way that she wanted to um and you know as I mentioned my my dad's mother you know she was like i said she was a single mom so she was just trying to make ends meet and everything but what's what's really cool is that to your point do i feel pressure because i think i do feel a little bit from from the families like oh someone in our family is actually doing something with this right and so yeah I, I mean it's a little bit but it doesn't really bother me i just just go out and do do whatever it is that you know makes us uh feel good about doing the music that we do and let let things kind of come to play as they come to play pressure pressure and pride at the same time um you talked about you know the guys and what you each of you bring and, and we talked about how the mu the music is organic and and whatnot um what what should fans expect from the music in terms of are you and i know you're like hey i bring we could we could do we could do a different types of rock and roll but are you power rock are you lyrics are you rhythm are you right. mainstream is it all the above and and this is how we feel today and this is what you're going to get so come for the ride is that <laughs> right yeah a mix? we're a mixed mash um i think a lot of a lot of times when people ask us maybe the similar question we describe ourselves as like hard melodic rock uh we focus on, you know, very hooky, powerful riffs. Uh, mo uh, vocals are really a centerpiece of it all. And we focus on like power vocals, I guess, for lack of better words. Um, and, but most importantly is really strong melodies. Uh, I think that's something that's missing nowadays. I just, I just don't think people really focus on the melody and the lyrical content as, as much. Um, I agonize over lyrics. Uh, I will spend literally like a week on one sentence on a verse or, and some songs they just kind of write themselves, but those are incredibly few and far in between. But we're, again, I think we're just trying to write songs that will be uh, something very memorable and obtainable and familiar to to the listener and something like uh, i don't know what it is about this song but i gravitate to it it sounds familiar i like it but it's different mm -hmm. and that's all in the craft of writing of good melodies and maybe a little catchy little guitar line that just sprinkled in here or there and and the lyrical content where it can't be like too on the nose for me personally when i write songs i don't like come out and nail you right on the nose with this is what the song's about i want the song to be left open for interpretation it means something to me but let it mean something maybe possibly entirely different to someone else right so um that's kind of like the focus of us is just really strong hooky rock and hopefully it, it stands the test of time when you're uh when you're agonizing over that that line right that lyrical line mm -hmm. is it because you're trying to fit you know a mathematical rhythm in the song or is it because you really are, are agonizing over the meaning of the word or the placement of it or 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 you know more of the meaning as opposed to the the, the math of it all the above <laughs> you just mentioned <laughs> okay it, it's it, there's so many ingredients right i mean you know I mean, you just nailed it. It's it's all the above, yeah. you know. And some and something might sound really really awesome, right? Or feel good or whatever it is, but the word itself just doesn't roll off the tongue right or something, or just sounds a little out of place, right? So, um, it's all the above, Guido. It's write it, write it down one way, pronounce it another when you're singing, right? <laughs> right, right. But it, and it's, I had it up here, but now it's going to end up over here. Or, <laughs> <laughs> right uh, so if uh if i listen to corvus lore at home and then i go see you guys live what what will i hear that's the same and and what will i hear that's different everything you hear live is the same as you hear on the recording you're not you're not just a studio band far from it everything you hear on the recordings album you will hear live we we don't do any backing tracks or anything like that. We're singing all our parts. We're not flying in 
drums and stuff like motley crew or anything like i'm sorry no uh, <laughs> no um, overdubs no, uh, no i you know look at i know i know a lot of bands do it and yeah. and i think there's a place for it right and i'm not trying to you know say anything negative about it uh Honestly, I think we're probably just too lazy to try to think about, oh, let's put all tracks in and all this stuff. <laughs> let's just execute it live. It's just one less thing for us to worry about, right? Oh, do you got the tracks, you know? Um, no. So, I mean, I do my best to hold down the rhythm. And Eric obviously is phenomenal lead guitarist and he takes care of the rest. And, and Mike is really in a band in, in his own right because of the bass lines he writes just are from another planet. And, and Joe is just that, you know, quintessential power drummer that just fills in all the gaps. So, yeah, I, I think a lot of people, when they hear us live, they're always very pleased and, and, and really surprised. Just like, wow, you know, that's what I heard, you know, on the track. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And, you know, going back to what you said earlier, right? The, the band in a box, right? Um, stuff gets overproduced sometimes and you kind of go live right. and you that's not what I heard when I was listening to this at home. Why does it sound this way, right? Right. Uh, and I think when you go and, and you do hear it and you go, hey, I, this I, this is exactly that same melody, that same rhythm, the same words, the same sound. Now I'm you're surprised when you hear that because you're like, wow, this is great. Right. I, I'm getting right. what, I, I, what I heard and what I connected with in the first place. So right. uh, you, what you see is what you get. It sounds like with Corvus Lore then. In terms I, of I, I would as as a fan going to shows and some yeah. of the concerts I've been to, I have, I remember being disappointed, right? Just like, what? You know? Um, but yeah, you know, I understand there's a place, there's a time and place for everything, but yeah, for us no. All right. So we're not going to see any, you know, aircraft carrier rentals and videos that, you know, that would, <laughs> they would give you some crazy environment or anything like that. Well, the um, videos are a whole other thing. We we like to have the fun with the videos. Yeah. Well, right. I was gonna get to those too because those those are really nicely produced videos, by the way. Just that they're on yeah. the website, corvuslore.com. You can go there and, and check out the videos there. We'll have that on the on the notes. Yeah. Too. So that's uh, there's a phenomenal videographer, director, producer in the Bay Area. His name is Mike Slope. And he is an absolute magician um, in pulling the videos together for us. We actually just finished filming our third single um, uh, video this past weekend. And I think the band still hates me for it because it was another level. It was it was a big ask. I'm not going to reveal much, but it was... Ah. <laughs> it was it was really challenging. Let's just let's just say it dealt with a lot of water. And um so but Mike Slow is uh phenomenal. So that that new single is gonna drop on May 9th with with the video to support it. So look out for that. May 9th with video to support. And all we know is it involves a lot of water. This is what more can we ask for? Like you know, I'm gonna be <laughs> um Good. Ryan, is there, uh, maybe it's not fair to me to ask, but maybe it's all of you. Is there a, a band member who, um, you know, shows up first and leaves last? You all sound passionate. So is there, but is there. Yeah. A, is it? Yeah. Well, um, Joe is usually the first one there because we rehearse at his house, but sometimes he's not there because he's running late. So <laughs> he's late to his own home. <laughs> um, but uh no we all we all leave at the same time um yeah. yeah i i would say a few years ago you know i was always the one there first but it seems like i'm straggling in a little bit later than everybody else nowadays but uh now we get in there and get our you know we would probably rehearse for two and a half hours or so and that's yeah. about it and get out when you when you're not with the guys and doing that are you always you know on your guitar or, or doing something like is that part of your every day no matter what not every day um but just about i mean i'm always fiddling and i always have an idea in my head that i want to work out maybe on the guitar or something like that and maybe bring to the band during the next session or something like that uh, uh i have a weird habit of coming up with melodies in the shower probably as a lot of singers do but um yeah, so I mean, it's part of your life, right? 
going back to yeah. the, my comment about being in your DNA. So I'm always thinking of something. So you got to pick up the guitar and work it out. So you're uh, you're doing lead vocals, but you're also playing guitar. Do you have a preference between the two? If the band would let me, uh oh, <laughs> and and have like another guitarist come in, I would love that. And I would just and I would just do lead vocals. Right on. I, I I'm a singer at heart, and I'm sure you you've heard it from a lot of. A lot of other artists there's something about singing vocals with an instrument hanging on your body that just for whatever reason makes it that much more challenging um of course you're focusing on executing your guitar parts so that probably has something to do with it but there's something about the physical element with with an instrument strapped to your body that for me is just uh it just makes it a little bit more challenging um, but I think in a lot of ways, it's made me a better singer um, because when I get that guitar off of me, it's just like, I really want to let it rip and I have a lot of less worry, you know? So, but uh, yeah, I would love to have another guitarist in the band, but that's not going to happen. Um, Eric, our lead guitarist is like, oh, hell no. <laughs> so like, whatever. Why, why is it? Is it, is it because it introduces like another element in the band? And I think it does smooth right now and it's good and I, th I think i think it does i mean it, it why wouldn't it right i think it would i mean and it's just one more person that potentially could show up late to rehearsal right <laughs> so <laughs> um but uh yeah yeah i don't know i i i would entertain it definitely as i mentioned but i don't think the other band members are open to it so that's okay i'll i'll power through <laughs> I mean, you got your vocals are killer. Like they're just killer vocals. No, uh, you. your, your range is just is wild, and uh, oh, in a wild in a in a good way. Um, you know, I like listening to your tunes. I just floored by it. Uh, so powerful, and and I like I it was just a you know I was thinking man like, and you said earlier I just try to keep rhythm. I'm thinking well, you know is is really the guitar, but but your your guitar it sounds good. You got the rhythm and it sounds good too. So. Uh, but hey, whatever, maybe, maybe it'll happen one day where you just let loose that way. I know, you know, what's weird for me. Like we were talking earlier and yeah. I said, well, I'm a little bit of a music hobbyist and, and, you know, I have all these little quirks about me. Uh, I hide behind the, the guitar. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, oh, you know, really? I don't know how to sing without the guitar almost, but oh, that really? just means hmm. because I might not be a good singer. So I don't know, or, or I might not be a good guitarist either. <laughs> 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 which is why i talk to folks like you <laughs> but you're more comfortable on the guitar is what you're saying I, i'm i'm not i'm just more comfortable if i have if i could do both things at once which is i don't know why right. um uh, you know but anyways um look less about me more about you uh do you have a favorite go-to guitar since you since you have the guitar or? uh i love i love my uh 339 semi hollow body gibson it's uh it's uh i call it my mojo maker it's um it's an awesome guitar uh very versatile and uh i know uh gibsons are supposedly famous for not holding tune but this one it's just rock solid and uh my other guitar that i really love a lot that i go to a lot is uh my nick huber cross statter too it's he's a german luthier he only makes about 200 guitars a year wow and this guitar is just it's just it's massive it's just it's a beautiful guitar kind of has like a les paul jr look to it but this thing's on steroids it has a, a soap bar p90 in the in the neck pickup and a, a humbucker and the bridge but it has just a big fat neck and that thing is uh that thing just growls it's just phenomenal phenomenal guard guitar yeah look look up nick huber i mean he is incredible um incredible instruments but yeah those are my kind of my go-to's what about you what do you play um i have a a, a norman guitar it's a um an acoustic norman's made in canada okay. Yeah, there was this, I, I've told this story before, there was a little shop uh, when I lived in Toronto uh, called Waltz Music. 
and you could go in there and, and they'd let you do whatever, like, you know, pick whatever guitar you want, play around. And so one day I kind of said, yeah, you know what? I really like the pickup in that guitar. I like the neck in that guitar. I like the body in that guitar, <laughs> you know, and they're looking at me and I'm like, yeah, it's too bad. Like, and they're like, well, just order it. I'm like, what do you mean order it? They're like, we can custom order it for you. You want those three things. They're, it's oh, the yeah. same company. They'll make it for you. That's rad. So I went home and I told uh, told my wife and, and I said, I don't know, it's going to cost this much. And they're like, you told your wife? I did. You told your wife? Yeah, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she's like, just order it. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, order it. She's like, you you obviously love all these things about it. Why would you pass this up? Like, you keep going there. Stop going there. Just buy something. <laughs> so, Sounds like my wife. Yeah. So that was that was it. She she convinced me to to buy that. From an electric uh, guitar perspective, I I love Les Pauls. Like I, they just the Les Paul guitars are right. I have a yeah. Les Paul, but it's not the high end high end. I have a I have a studio. It's, it's great, right. but. But I love my, uh, speaking of acoustics, I have uh, a Guild True American nice. Dreadnought. And that thing is 20 plus years old. And that wow. thing is phenomenal. Love that guitar. Now, are I you, probably... uh, with, with your guitar, sorry, with your guitars, are you, uh, let them let them live, live their life sort of thing? Like, uh, you know, you get the nicks and the scratches and, the, yep. you know, just let them live their life, right? Like you don't refinish it. and It's character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay yeah cool yeah took me down the guitar world there for a second um uh, yeah look um when um you've hit the stage you've you've uh, played um like your band you guys have played with other um fellow musicians and and whatnot uh i know that you recently shared the stage with uh you know the band tesla right they're iconic rockers and whatnot long before elon musk came, came around and started right are that Stole right? the name you know, you know, Tesla, the great radio controversy. Um, what was that like? And, and did you have any stories that came out of that? Or was it, hey, they're playing their thing, we're playing our thing? And No, well, I mean, it was, first of all, it was a, it was a total honor to play with those guys. Um, and I mean, as you mentioned, it's a legendary band, right? And, you know, sp speaking of music that's timeless, I think their music's timeless. And uh, so, but yeah, they were absolutely beautiful human beings they were they couldn't have been nicer um can't say enough about them how gracious they were and uh everybody on their staff they were just wonderful wonderful people and uh yeah they uh they uh just really treated us like rock stars as well which was really nice and uh you know they liked what they heard um it was funny uh, jeff keith's wife was talking about our video and and stuff like that and how cool it is and we're like right on you know that's that's pretty awesome and but there was a pretty funny story where um we're so it's at the reddick civic uh the reading civic auditorium and the doors open at six o'clock and we were supposed to do our sound check literally like at five and tessa was still finishing up their sound check and it was past like 5 30 and uh the sound engineer that was running for the for us that night he came up to us and said hey how fast can you guys set up you know and um and we're like oh we could be set up like in 10 minutes because we already had a lot of our stuff set up already and everything and he's like okay well then we'll do your sound check and he says we're gonna hold the doors for you for for 15 minutes i thought wow that was pretty cool right so we're setting up. We finally we finally take the the stage at like around five forty. By the time you know we're all ready to go, and then Eric, our lead guitarist, Frank Hannon is still hanging out on the stage, and Eric is like, "Hey, uh, Frank, you know you want to check out my as like his fiftieth anniversary Gibson Les Paul, oh, and it's beautiful white Alpine guitar and everything." Yeah. And, and Frank is just like, yeah, I want to see that. So anyways, Eric shows it to him. And then right away, Frank's calling some guy he knows in guitar shop talking about the guitar. <laughs> and then, you know, he's holding the guitar and all this stuff and everything. And I'm standing there going, <laughs> uh, we got a doors are opening. We haven't even like hit an <laughs> instrument yet. 
and and uh it was it was super cool frank was so into it and everything but eric had to like uh hey frank thanks and everything but um i got a sound check i gotta do <laughs> you know, it's like uh, are you freaking kidding me did you just try to big time frank um but it was it was super cool but yeah the whole evening was whole evening was awesome the the fans were fantastic i mean the, those fans are just crazy about tesla and 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 they really loved us as well and uh it was it was an awesome experience so we're, we're hoping to get to do that you know a few more times with those guys and others alike right on that's a good story uh, you talked that you brought the fans into that um what, what relationship do you have with the fans like what is what is the corvus lore relationship with the fans in what way what do you mean um are you out there with them is it personal is it uh, oh yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah i mean um you know if, i mean you want to be a you know you want to be like approachable and with them and and you know you're just you know i mean we're just corvus lore we're not really some you know guns and roses tesla band or anything like that um but you know we you know, we make the time for anybody and anyone, um, anybody who likes is coming out and watching our music or listening to our music. Trust me, we're going to make the time to like interact and connect with the fans as, as much as possible. And for me, I, I, I my, the relationship I hope to have is that they just love the music so much that they kind of adopt it into their lives and share with others. Um, so, but yeah, we, we love hanging out and just, I mean, after a show, we'll, we'll hang out for as long as, as it takes or as long as forever just chilling with the fans all night long right on so put your put your uh corvus lore on your playlist and then go check them out live and then go see them and get autographs right that's yeah something like that right? that's usually how it works right no. <laughs> um listen you you mentioned guns and roses and you you also played alongside um dizzy reed from gnr at the whiskey a go go i love the, the name of that whiskey a go go um uh, <laughs> Was, uh, you know, was that playing together, separate acts? What was that like, I guess, you know, uh, what was that? It was, that? it was, honestly, Guido, it was crazy. I mean, there were a lot of bands playing that night, so we weren't playing with him. Mm. We were, we were in our own thing. And um, it was great. I mean, we, uh, we went on fairly early and uh, we had a killer show. As a matter of fact, Dizzy Reed and his whole band came out and checked us out. They're like, who are these guys? Um, so that was really cool and a lot of, a lot of nice, uh, compliments there, but it was, it was a lot of bands and a lot of craziness that night, but, uh, still it was a, a complete honor to play with, you know, to share the same stage with him on the same night. Yeah. Exciting night. Um, you talked earlier about, you know, Corvus lore is Corvus lore. Um, you know, we go out, we do our thing. Does it bother you if, if, um, you know fans or pundits say hey they sound like stone temple pilots or they sound like velvet revolver or you know they're an alternative uh version of punk gnr or something like <laughs> does it bother you or anything or or do you so hey great that's what you hear that's what you get right right i haven't heard the punk gnr before that's that's a new twist but um we do get the the stone temple pilots and and uh velvet revolver uh every once in a while we get a little uh uh comment about the cult or sound garden stuff like that and honestly speaking if if they're comparing us to bands like that i'll take it all day because those are legendary bands um we're not trying to be them again we're we're who we are but if people you know going back to my comment earlier like if there's something that sounds familiar and obtainable to them when and that's how they relate or translate the music to, then I'll take that. But those are all legendary bands. And have, and some of those bands are are really, quite honestly, our heroes. I mean, Scott Weiland to me is probably one of the most overlooked vocalists. I mean, Scott just had, you want to talk about melodies? That guy had melodies for days on end. Yeah. I mean, very, very charismatic vocalist. Um, and dynamic too. Um, yeah, just just phenomenal so scott and cornell have been big influences for me personally um ryan corvus Lore has put out a few singles uh and i also see you have an album on the horizon i i hopefully i got the name right lucida 
Lucida. Yeah, Lucida. Lucida. Thank yeah. you. And that's on the Valley of Fire record label. Yep. Uh, I, it's, it looks like the album's going to have nine songs. And yeah. Is that right? Now, yeah. uh, is the album, um, is it going to tell a story? Like if I go song to song, is it, does the album have a theme? Um, right. It, well, I, I'll let you in on a little secret. So the theme of the whole album is basically home. And and Lucida um, essentially is like the brightest object within the sky within a given constellation. And it's like the center of all things. And when writing the album, each song is about coming home, whether it's not your physical home, but home to who you are, um, coming home and having peace with uh, a certain event in your life, a realization, um, you know, and an understanding. And it's just the recentering and, and the focus of everything that, that all is and are, right? So uh, that's really what the song is, is a lot of, um, the album's quite a bit about, is just there's a common thing about home and and understanding and just realization of who you are and where we're at and and um where you came from so i i love the, i love it has a theme i love that theme uh do the songs uh play into each other that way then like the the message no not necessarily no um <laughs> so it's now, like uh, for what you're trying to describe, I think a little was like Operation Mind Crime or something like that from yeah. Queens, right? Right? Or yeah, or Meatloaf, or you know, no, I'm just yeah, kidding. right. Just kidding. Not right. not a rock opera. No, no, no. No, they don't. They don't play into one another, but they they carry a same characteristic, yeah. which I like that because they're independent, you know. And um, so, but um, yeah, it's 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 a great album. I can't wait for everybody to hear it. And yeah, I, I'm I'm super excited when I hear that the album has a theme and that it carries something like that. I get super excited. I think that, you know, we're so uh, I, I'm not bashing the whole idea that, you you know, we release singles and release singles and release singles. It, it's obviously working, but I'm just uh, maybe it's a purist thing. I don't know. I, I like the old the idea of an album and having the theme and having the story of it. And, right. But I also if you give me the chance, like, and, you know. If I could flip through a book, I'd still do that as opposed to a digital download, but I don't know. Right, right. I've said right. too much. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, like recording an album is a lot like building a house. I mean, yeah. it's a tremendous amount of, of work and effort. And to think of all those moving parts and have it all kind of flow into one another, if you're doing like a total theme that actually connects to one another, it's that's 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 a lot of creative thought and writing to to be had, right? Is uh is romantic traffic? That's uh is that that's one of your singles. Is that going to be a lead yeah. off single for the album, or is it going to be something else? Or, or can we... so our so our our first single was boxing ballerina, yeah, and uh, romantic traffic. Yeah, was the second one. And so, no, are you talking about the song order itself on the album? Yeah, yeah are you gonna shoot? You know what, Guido? I think you caught me. I off the top okay. of my head, I don't even know what the lead off track is. I think it's uh gosh what is it it might be it might be gosh it might be calling jupiter i'm not sure all right well we'll see i could be totally wrong the band's gonna listen yeah. back to this later and go you idiot so <laughs> no okay we'll cut this out no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um valley of fire record uh label um when did that happen uh what led to that uh um, right how are things going with the label what does it mean for you to to be signed with that label as part of the band's journey right so valley of fire they're they're a fairly new label and um we actually got connected with them uh through one of the the founders tim narducci tim narducci is also the same person who produced and engineered uh lucida and Tim Narducci is a phenomenal musician, singer, and songwriter in his own right, and also happens to be one hell of a monster producer. And we called him, we call him Golden Ears Narducci. Um, he's just the guy's amazing. And so when we recorded the album with him, it was probably a little like a year or so later that he and his other partner uh jj garcia who, uh, of the label approached us and said hey we really love the music and we love what you guys are doing and 
we'd like to see if you guys would be interested in signing on board with us and and having that relationship with Tim and knowing how he was and how authentic and real and, and true and what a wonderful human being he is, we just thought, well, this is just kind of a no-brainer for us. I mean, and JJ Garcia has a long history of of being in the music industry and he's a powerhouse in his own right. So we just knew we were in good hands. It was a no brainer. It's interesting. You know, like I, I've talked to a lot of musicians uh, lately with the shows that I'm doing and, and more and more I'm hearing that like when, when, uh, when folks are signing with a label, it's right. really coming down to that relationship and that personal relationship. And, and it's almost like a mutual investment between the, the two. It is. It's, it's, it's less of a, I guess in the, if I can say older days, it, it seemed more of a transaction and, and now it seems more of a, a personal transaction, you know, right. a relationship well, transaction. So. Yeah. Cause you, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, Valley of Fire is, it's, they don't care what music genre there you are. They're just interested in great music because they're lovers of music. Like you say, you know, yourself, right. You and I are lovers of music and that's what they want. And they know if they just continue to sign up great, acts great bands doing great music success will come from that instead of just focusing on you know trying to be the success right away and doing all the shenanigans they're they're more invested in understanding the music how great it is and building that relationship with the artists and that's what they've done i mean they're they've been phenomenal so um we're very very proud to be be on that label with them Hats off to the label. Glad that they that you guys uh, have that and that they're working with you. Look for more great things from them too. Uh, you talked earlier about uh, we talked about the the video romantic traffic, and uh, you know when I was watching it, I was like, yeah, it looks like a fun video. Uh, there's an airplane backdrop uh, for that video. Um, where did you shoot it, and what's going on? What's why the airplane backdrop? What's what's going on with that? Well, so romantic traffic. The the song is about my crazy travels specifically I used to travel to Asia quite a bit and um, it was really hard because I was gone for very long periods of time um, you know very hard on, on uh, my relationship with my wife and my family and and uh, so th the title is is deceiving because you know a lot of people look at traveling as you know it's very fantasizing and romantic and all this stuff and everything but there's a dirty side to it. And, um, you know, it's, it could be grueling and taxing. And as I just mentioned, it's hard on relationships and at times not a whole heck of a lot of fun. So that song was inspired by all those travels. And so what we wanted to depict in the video was all these crazy things happening as you travel, you know, I'm in a rickshaw in one scene and I'm in a cab with a coked out cabbie driver and some guy in the back seat who has no space etiquette. And then you get on a plane and then the staff on the plane, you're not too confident in, and there's a lot of funny business and, and all that stuff. So that's what I wanted to depict in that video. And it totally, we totally pulled it off uh, again, hats off to uh, Mike yeah, Slope, the video director. Um, that video was filmed in Santa Rosa, California, downtown scene, Santa Rosa, old downtown Santa Rosa. And um, the plane is actually the plane from uh it's at Santa Rosa Airport Museum. I forget the name of the uh, Petaluma. No, not Petaluma. Santa Rosa Airport Museum. And that plane was in um, James Bond. Uh, I think it was Goldfinger movie. Oh, right on. Yeah. Yeah, 1964. That was the plane that they filmed, I guess, some scenes in it. And they just coincidentally had it. I wasn't looking for that plane when I was scouting out locations. I was actually looking at other planes. And uh, they just... So happened to have it there and we're like, we'll take that one. <laughs> and so we did all the filming in that and uh, it was great. And uh, V, V dropped Mond, who was our flight airline attendant. She was, she stole the show. She was awesome. She was great in that video. So it was a lot of fun shooting that video. We did it in two days. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, I love it. I love it. So folks, if you go, if folks go to corvuslore.com, there's a link to the video there. I'm going to put the, the link in our notes too, because it does. It just looks, I love the video. It looks like a fun video. Um, how important are videos nowadays? And and 
you know, I go back years and years. We talk MTV or up in Canada, we used to have much music. We still have much music. They just don't play music anymore. They, they play movies. <laughs> um, <I'm, laughs> but, you know, how important is the video? I, I've just been seeing more and more bands do videos now and, and putting them out there this way. Are they, is there a resurgence? Is, are we seeing something? Absolutely. Like, yeah. I think it's, I think it's necessary. I mean, first of all, it helps, you know, I think connect the listener to you right there's a visual element that like oh okay you get that that visual connection um and it's part of your branding too right um so it, it all ties in together i think videos you know they they did fade for quite a while well yeah, i guess you kind of blame mtv for that cuz mtv was all about videos and then they mtv became nothing about videos yeah. um but I, I think again it it's another way for the listener to connect with you. And I think the visual element, which the video provides is, is critical in building that relationship uh, with the listener. So we, we take the videos incredibly serious and uh, we're really proud of, of this third one that's coming out on May 9th, which I think it's going to be probably our best video yet. And that's saying a lot because the first two videos were, were great. The first one, boxing ballerina, one of the best rock video, uh, and Poppy Jasper International Film Festival out of hundreds of other artists. And so we're we're pretty stoked about that. But uh, videos, yes, if if you're a band and you're trying to get some movement and some some uh, fan base growing for you and you better do it. You better do the video. Yeah. It's super important. It's just another way for people to connect with you. So, Ryan, we got the single coming out. We got the songs. Um, we've got the videos. How about touring uh when the album comes out are you going to do shows do you have a schedule are you heading out uh anything like that would love to right now we don't have any shows on 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 the books we're working on that as we speak um we're looking to probably drop the album on somewhere in july like early july so we'll be hopefully uh line up quite a bit of shows probably thereafter but we might get a few surprise gigs before that that we're working on but uh, the idea would be great. Yeah, we're hoping to piece together a, a small tour of sorts. And um, and you guys would be the first to know once we have something lined up. Exciting. Late summer. That would be awesome. Corvus Lore, late summer, new album tour. Totally looking forward uh, to doing something like that. Um, what is the best way folks can connect with you? Social media. What's, what's your favorite social media or, or how do you want folks to connect? The usual suspects, right? Um, Facebook, Instagram, you know, CorvusLore.com, yeah. uh, Valley of Fire Records YouTube channel. You got you got all those, and you can find Corvus Lore on YouTube as well. Um, so yeah, just there's a apparently we have a TikTok account too. I just found this out like at our last show from our lead guitarist, who he's like the the IT mastermind genius, and we're being interviewed and. And he drops that bomb on me and I went, what the hell? We have a TikTok account? I didn't I had no idea. I admit I'm not really great at TikTok for all the technology and, and video and all the stuff I do. I haven't done a lot of TikTok, so I'm gonna have to check you out, find out the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> See, what are you just are you putting the you must be putting the videos out maybe on TikTok too then or I, I personally okay. don't go to TikTok, <laughs> so I can't speak speak to that. But yeah, the other the other suspects, Facebook and Instagram, you, you could definitely find us there. I, I admit, like a, you know, a couple of months ago, I told the kids here at home, I said, I, I opened a TikTok account and they looked at me and they said, why are you on TikTok? <laughs> right? like, are you what, trying to learn how to dance or something? <laughs> so, I don't know. It's uh, TikTok is, is new to me too a bit. So right. Um, look, I, I've kept you way longer than I think you agreed to be talking to me. Oh, this is great. I love it. So uh, I apologize for that. And, and thank you for spending the time with me and, and the fans who are going to hear you um, on here and on the Path Radio uh, Spotlight and on the music with the Path Radio um you know i say thanks for letting us inside the lore uh but before i let you go is there anything else that you'd like to leave us with that you know of the ten thousand questions i asked you that i didn't cover no, I, I first of all uh, thanks for having me uh and taking the time to to you know spend this with me and also just the opportunity to, to connect with you and your fans it's um what you're doing is is important work as we spoke before we hopped on um you're obviously very passionate about what you do and um it's people like you that 
gets artists out there and heard. So um, you're doing very important work and there's a lot of great music out there. And without you doing what you're doing, you know, a lot of, a lot of that great music would never be heard. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it, Guido. Thank you for your kindness. Letting it ride with some romantic traffic is Ryan Jones on lead vocals and rhythm guitar, Mike Anetto on bass and vocals, Joel Cloutier on drums and Eric Fraser on lead guitar. They are Corvus Lore. They're playing right now on thepathradio.com. Their singles are available on Apple, Spotify, and a whole bunch of other uh, social media channels, videos on YouTube. We got TikTok. I will have all of their social media contact information in the show notes. Ryan, thank you again. Keep on rocking, and I hope to have you back. I'd love to be back, man. Thank you so much, Guido. Thanks for having me. Ciao.